town meeting to order. Please be seated. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and join us if you wish. Mr. Bob Markle, our interim town administrator, will lead us in the pledge. Please be seated. Thank you, Mr. Bob Markle. Good evening, fellow citizens of Southampton. I'm Robert Floyd, your town moderator. Welcome to our special town meeting. Thank you for your continued support. It's an honor to continue to serve you. I much appreciate it. Thank you. Reading the warrant, attest constable, officers return January 9, 2014. This is to certify that I have served the within warrant by posting attested copies thereof in six usual places, 14 days at least before the time of holding said meeting. Signed by constable, true test, Janine Domina, town clerk of Southampton. We have five exits, bathrooms on the side. I also serve you by being a cemetery commissioner, superintendent of cemeteries. We have three, and I serve on the board of directors for East Hampton Media. Tonight, our special town meeting is taped by our community access commercial free TV, scheduled to be broadcast tomorrow at 6 o'clock. Thank you, East Hampton <laughs> Media, Channel 191. Our town meeting is a business meeting of Southampton, a legislative session called pursuant to a warrant that lists the only topics on which our meeting tonight may actually take action. My role as your town moderator is to facilitate, to provide an open process that you voters trust, and to administer rules and guidelines in an even-handed manner, not to assure any particular outcome. My responsibility tonight is to be as fair and considerate as I can. Your responsibility tonight is to be the legislative branch of our town government for tonight's articles. Tonight, you exercise your freedom of speech. You all have one vote, a single choice, yes or no, for each article. Before we vote yes or no, we individually are free to question, to debate, to discuss, to comment, to amend and to table any motion that is legislate in a civilized way. No comments of a personal nature, no naming of names are to be made. Rude behavior, especially shouting, bullying, lecturing, and personal attacks will not be tolerated. Anyone unwilling to comply with these rules will be removed after the third warning. So let this be our first warning. When ready to contribute something new, please approach the microphone up front, first come, first heard. State your name and address clearly. All discussions must be relevant to the particular motion before us, the merits or lack thereof of the motion. Please face me, your town moderator, with your opinions, questions, and answers. This is meant to prevent lecturing, bullying, intimidation, and cross-examinations. I will only recognize speakers standing at the microphone unless it is a point of order. You simply then rise at your seat and shout out point of order. And I'll take over. I will only recognize the motion to move the question from someone who is standing at the microphone and recognize in due order. Please respect you cannot speak and then try to move the question in one standing. Simply because someone states something, it does not make it true. When a majority leans towards approving or denying, it does not make it right by itself. The plan tonight is for you to speak no more than five minutes at a time and no more than twice on any article except to correct an error. Thank you for your patience and respecting everyone tonight. These guidelines will assist us in a more efficient meeting. It is Southampton's custom to vote to allow somebody new to address you. That's not a citizen. I will read their names 
Bob Markle, Kim Florick. Hearing no objections, we will proceed. Thank you. May I hear a motion for Article 1, please? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town, town vote to amend the non-criminal disposition bylaw as reflected in this warrant to include enforcement by the health department of trash hauler and recycling operation regulations and Title V septic system inspection regulations through the non-criminal ticketing program. Motion made, do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded, who will address this motion? Mr. Markle. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, the town has adopted the non-criminal ticketing <coughs> process for enforcement of town bylaws. Prior to this, <coughs> the only way that the police could enforce our bylaws or others would be to take an individual to court uh, who was in violation. Now they can simply issue a ticket similar to a parking ticket. Uh, this will amend that bylaw to allow the health department to use <coughs> the ticketing process for trash hauler and recycling operation regulations and also for Title V uh, septic system inspection regulations. Thank you. Anyone wants to speak against this article? Anybody have any questions, <coughs> comments? Seeing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion on Article 1, sig please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, please signify by saying nay. nay. Article passes by majority. May I hear a motion for Article 2, please? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town approve Section 5, Use Regulations, Table 1, Use Regulations, and Section 16, Solar Electric Generating Facilities, Section G and H, as presented in Article 3 of the Warrant for the January 24, 2017 Special Town Meeting. Motion made. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Who would like to speak on this? Good evening, Mr. Moderator. My name is Paul Demon from the Cha Planning Board. I live at oh, Palmer address, please, too, Mr. Demon. Pomeray Meadow Road. Thank you. As you know, we've had a solar bylaw for some time now in, in town, but we had to uh, revise it, which we did at a public hearing on January 4th, 2017, uh, and it was approved by the board. Um, what we failed to put in the previous uh, bylaw was uh, language that would permit research, development, and manufacturing facilities of products that generate renewable or, or alternative energy as a by right use. So we had to uh, redo the table of use regulations as uh, it has been stated in the article. And uh, for those that may not be aware of the green community. Mr. Stephen, just speak right in there like it's an ice cream cone for the people in the back. For those that don't know what the green designation for a uh, program is in this town, it uh, helps us uh, 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 apply for grant money that will finance additional energy efficiency and renewable energy projects for the local level. Uh, reducing energy usage within our schools and town buildings and, and police and fire, and um, also adopting the latest building codes and other criteria. I think that pretty much covers it. Thank you. Anyone want to speak against this motion? Right behind me. April West, April West, 54 strong. I just have a question of clarification. Right now, the language says research, development, and manufacturing facilities of products that generate renewable energy or, energy or alternative energy are not permitted. Does that mean if a company wants to come into town and if the zoning would 
allow them to come and they're dealing with renewable energy product manufacturing, we would not allow that. Question, who would like to answer that, Mr. Demon? No, to my knowledge, it does not uh, disallow it. Um, we had to, uh, there's certain zones where we didn't have the language correct in commercial zones. Um, and all these uh, permits, whether they're even a rooftop um, unit by a residence, that's by right without any, uh, with just a building permit. Any ground mounted units or um, higher units that would create megawatts for resale or uh, their own usage would still become before the planning board and um, have site plan review under that special permit. Thank you. Did that answer your question? Thank you. Any other comments? Questions? Seeing none, we're going to vote. All those in favor of the motion on Article 2, we need a two-thirds majority. Please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. The motion passes unanimously. Can I hear a motion for Article 3, please? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer the sum of $14,200.81 to the prior year bills account to refund retroactive compensation as part of the December 2016 police collective bargaining agreement. Said sum shall be taken from free cash. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Who would like to speak on this, please? Charlie Konecki, 146 Valley Road. Basically, we've been in contract negotiations with the police. Closer. We've been in contract negotiation with the police department for the last couple of years. We finalized that contract and signed it, and this is to compensate them for that time. Thank you. Anyone like to speak against this motion? Anybody have any questions? Any comments? Seeing none, we'll vote for the motion under Article 3. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. The motion passes unanimously, meeting the nine-tenths majority required. May I hear a motion for Article 4, please? I move that the town transfer $419.86 from the free cash to the prior year's billing account to pay Verizon bill for fiscal 2016. Motion made. Do I hear a second? Second. Who would like to speak on this? Yes. Bob Markle, interim town administrator. Uh, the town received a bill from Verizon in December of 2016 that included an amount of 400 and uh, what was it, 419 dollars from the prior fiscal year. We have no explanation for their billing process, other than uh, we have verified that we owe this amount, and since. It comes from a prior uh, fiscal year. We have to uh, uh, pay this as an unpaid bill. Thank you. The line, incidentally, there were two lines in the town administrator's office. That may account for some of the confusion. Uh, we have found that the second line is really not necessary, and it was uh, taken out in December of 2016. Thank you. Anyone who wants to speak against this motion? Any questions? Any comments? This needs a nine-tenths majority. All those in favor of the motion under Article 4, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. The motion under Article 4 passes unanimously, meeting our nine-tenths requirement. Motion for Article 5, please. Mr. Moderator, I move that the to town transfer $13,574.91 from free cash to the prior year bills account to fund the deficit in the fiscal 2016 school lunch program. Motion made, do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Who would like to address this? Uh, 
um, Vicki Morrow Town Account, Pomeroy Meadow Road, um, and closing the books for FY16. There was a significant deficit in the um, school lunch program, which the general fund, no matter which fund the deficit is in, the general fund has to cover um, those particular deficits. Um, and in speaking with the DOR, um, it was better done this way at town meetings so everybody knew that um, we would be covering this deficit than actually just putting it on the tax recap. Um, and the majority of this comes from some unpaid school lunch balances and some comes from the school lunch monitors which were being paid out of this account which for next fiscal year should go into the school lunch budget. Um, but if you look at the trend for the school lunch program um, the collections have been down from 2008 through 2016. Um, meanwhile, our expenses for all the food and all the stuff that the kids eat have gone up, and so that attributes two pieces of this, too. Thank you. Anybody want to speak against this motion? Any comments? Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion on Article 5, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, please signify by saying nay. The motion in Article 5 passes unanimously, meeting our nine-tenths requirement. Motion for Article 6, please. Mr. Moderator, I move the town transfer the sum of $173,943 from free cash to the Capital Stabilization Fund. Motion made. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Who would like to address this, please? Mr. Moderator, Bob Markle, uh, Interim Town Administrator. It is town policy to transfer 35% of any certified free cash into the Capital Stabilization Fund to be used for capital purchases. To transfer 30% of any certified free cash into the Operational Stabilization Account and to transfer 10% of any certified free cash into the OPEB account, that is for other <coughs> um, post-employment benefits. The town had $496,000 certified this year, and this is the first of three articles to make those transfers, which would leave uh, $26,000 remaining in free cash for the remainder of this fiscal year. Thank you. Anyone want to speak against this motion? Any questions? Any comments? Seeing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion under Article 6, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. Motion under Article 6 passes unanimously. May I hear a motion for Article 7, please? I move that the town transfer the sum of $149,094 from free cash to the Operational Stabilization Fund. Motion made, do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Who would like to address this, please? Please address, yes. please address <coughs> This is me. the second, uh, second step, uh, transferring 30% of certified free cash for the fiscal year uh, into the Operational Stabilization Fund. Incidentally, uh, state law has changed as of uh, January of this year, so that it is no longer required to have a two-thirds majority to transfer money into a stabilization account. However, a two-thirds majority is still required to transfer funds out of a stabilization account. Thank you. Anyone like to speak against this motion? Any questions, any comments? Seeing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion in Article 7, please indicate by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, please indicate by saying nay. The motion under Article 7 passes unanimously. Mayor, a motion for Article 8, please. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer $49,689 from free cash to the other post-employment benefits account of the town. Motion made, do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Who would like to address this, please? Please face the moderator. Thank you. Mr. Moderator, um, every city and town in the United States is required by the Government Accounting Standards Board 
to carry the other post-employment benefit obligations on their books, on their balance sheet. Um, towns are strongly encouraged to begin funding this obligation uh, <clears throat> by both the Commonwealth as well as the federal government. Uh, this will be, uh, I believe, the second instance where money is being transferred into the OPEB account. Uh, this $49,000 uh, will be added to the amount already uh, in there, and that will bring the total to something over $100,000. Uh, the actuarial study uh, <clears throat> to assess what that obligation is uh, came in uh, at roughly $750,000. So the town has that kind of obligation, mostly for health insurance benefits, uh, to those employees who are retired and who will retire in the future. And so this is the process of funding that obligation. Thank you. Anyone want to speak against the motion for Article 8? Any questions, any comments? Seeing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion on Article 8, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. The motion for Article 8 passes unanimously. May I hear a motion for Article 9, please? Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to amend its prior vote taken under Article 8 of the warrant for the special town meeting on October 18, 2016, as presented regarding photographs for the inter interpretive sign at the Zipta Farm Conservation Area. Motion made, do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Who would like to address this? Marla Hank, Conservation yeah. Commission, Gilbert Rowe. Charlie, you want to lower that? Thank you. Right. Thank you. Sorry. No worries. Vertically challenged. So. Oh, good. Thank you. Marla Hank, Gilbert Road Conservation Commission. Unfortunately, the hard drive that Ed Need stored his pictures on is unreadable. It's a great disappointment to us, but nevertheless, other photographers have stepped up and voluntarily have donated wonderful images that will make the sign as um, educational as it would have been, and it also speaks to the honor of Ed. Thank you. Anyone want to speak against this motion? Any questions? Any comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion under Article 9, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. The motion under Article 9 passes unanimously. May I hear a motion for Article 10, please? I move the town transfer $5,000 from free cash to the Board of Selectmen line for a town administrator search for the hiring of a professional consultant to assist with the hiring process for a permanent town administrator. Motion made, do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Who would like to address this, please? Charlie Konecki, 146 Valley Road, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen. The reality of it is we are having a good time with Bob helping us as the acting town administrator, but we need to bring somebody into the fold to help us in the coming years. Uh, we believe that having some expertise to help the uh, search committee is the most appropriate way to address this, and that's why we're asking for this transfer into this line. Thank you. Anyone who want to speak against this motion? Michael Rosenberg, uh, Finance Committee, 144 East Street. Not specifically speaking against the Just motion. Right into the mic. Not specifically speaking against the motion, but the Finance Committee recommendation was based on the agreement that the funds would be transferred into a separate line item for the position, not into the Board of Selectmen expense line. If that information could be confirmed and that it would be transferred to a line at a later date, I think we'd find that acceptable. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Board of Selectmen have no problem having a second line for this at all. Thank you. 
Any other comments? Any questions? Seeing none, we'll vote. Motion under Article 10. All those in favor? Point of order. Please, sorry? Oh, if you want to make a motion to amend it, please do. Anybody can make the motion to amend. No, when we met as both committees, we agreed our recommendation was based on the language being changed to accept the fine. All right, we better use the mic, explain what's going on. Uh, the Finance Committee is concerned. Closer, closer. Finance Committee and the Select Board, when we met, we all agreed that there should be a separate line item, but in the motion it got dropped. So I make a motion that the motion read as is with the caveat that we add a separate line to keep track of that account in the selectman's accounts. Okay. Um, do you have the wording? Do you want that in writing? You're okay. You're okay? All right. We're, make, we're making an amendment to the motion, and I need a second for that amendment. We have a, thank you. We ha anybody can second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion on the amendment to m make it a separate line item? Seeing none, we'll vote on the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment to create a second line item, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. All right, the amendment passes unanimously. Now we're going to uh, consider voting on the amended motion. Any other comments? Seeing none. All those in favor of v voting in favor of the amended motion under Article 10, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. The motion under amended motion under Article 10 passes unanimously. May I see a, hear a motion for Article 11, please? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer $6,500 from free cash to the prior year bills account to cover a shortfall in fiscal 2016. Motion made, do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded, who would like to address this? Vicki? These were b legal bills that were brought to our attention after the close of the um, 2016 fiscal year deadline, and so they needed to go to town meeting to um, be appropriated for money to pay. Okay. Anybody want to speak against this motion? Any questions? Nine-tenths required. All those in favor of the motion under Article 11, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. The motion under Article 11 passes unanimously, meeting our nine-tenths requirement. May I hear a motion under Article 12, please? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer 4000 from free cash to the accountant expense line to fund the purchase of a new copier fax scanner. Motion made. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Who would like to address that? Vicki. Um, Vicki Morrow, Town Accountant, Pomeroy Meadow Road. Um, the current copier fax scanner that I have in my office um, is about 12 years old. They are no longer making parts for that particular machine, and so um, it is very um, time-consuming and um, less efficient to run up and down the stairs to the copier that goes downstairs for the work that we do in our office. So we are looking to purchase a new copier fax, or fax scanner. Thank you. Anyone want to speak against that motion? Article 12, any questions, comments? Seeing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion on Article 12, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. Motion under Article 12 passes unanimously. May I hear a motion for Article 13, please? I move the town transfer $2,500 from free cash to the tree warden's expense line to fund additional tree cutting during physical 2017. Motion made, here is second. Second. Motion made and seconded. Uh, who would like to address this, please? Uh, the tree warden's budget. It, the tree warden's budget got sort of slashed uh, at the beginning of the year when we had a microburst up on Gilbert Road, and uh, so he doesn't have the funding to complete the year to to do what he needs to do. Thank you. Any one want to speak against the motion? Any comments? Any questions? Seeing none, we'll vote. 
All those in favor of the motion under Article 13, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. The motion under Article 13 passes unanimously. May I hear a motion for Article 14, please? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer the sum of $35,000 from police wages to the police overtime line. Motion made, do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Who would like to address this? Robert? Yes. <laughs> um, um, Vicki Morrow, Pomeroy Meadow Road, town accountant. Um, in doing the budget for FY17, um, this was the first year we split out overtime wages for the police department. Um, and so we took a, our best guess at what we thought it might be. Um, which probably would have been enough, but there had been some um, unforeseen illnesses where the chief had to fill those positions with overtime, and this is just simply transferring the split of wages into the overtime um, new line item that we created. Thank you. Anyone who wishes to speak against this motion? Any comments, any questions? Seeing none, we'll vote. Motion under Article 14. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. The motion under Article 14 passes unanimously. May I hear a motion under Article 15, please? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer $6,000 from free, free cash to the police building line expense. Motion made. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Who would like to address this, please? Vicki. Um, Vicki Morrow, Town Accountant, Pomeroy Meadow Road. Um, again, with the FY17 budget, um, previously the town administrator's office was responsible for paying all the bills um, for the particular building on East Street. Um, and we, as a group, decided to be consistent and make all the department heads who were in a specific building responsible for their building expenses. When we broke out the building expenses, um, and m made it a police building expense line account, we estimated the numbers used from FY16. Um, and currently, we, on average year to date, based on what we've paid for our energy, um, gas and electric, um, the rates this year are higher than they were in previous years. And so in order for us to pay those bills to the end of the year, we need to um, put this money into this account Plus, there was an additional unexpected expense of about $3,900 to repair the condenser on the air conditioner, which also ate up some of the money that was in that budget. Thank you. Anyone who wishes to speak against this motion? Are there any comments, any questions? Seeing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion under Article 15, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. The motion under Article 15 passes unanimously. May I hear a motion, please, for Article 16? I move the town transfer $1,246.32 from free cash to wage accounts of the police chief to fund a cost of living increase for the police chief or chief of police. Motion made. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Who would like to address this? Uh, Mr. Moderator, um, I wrote the summary here that says that the police chief was the only individual in the town organization who did not receive a cost of living allowance in fiscal 16. I was corrected later on. There are two others, the town clerk and the treasurer collector, uh, did not receive uh, cost of living increases for fiscal 16. But this article was uh, directed at uh, the police chief uh, and, and uh, to uh, give him at twelve hundred forty six dollars and thirty two cents uh, as a cost of living increase from two thousand and sixteen thank you anyone who wish to speak against this motion are there any questions comments seeing none we'll vote all those in favor of the motion under article sixteen please signify by saying aye, aye. opposed please signify by saying nay motion under article sixteen passes unanimously May I hear a motion for Article 17, please? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer the sum of $10,000 from free cash to the health department wage line to fund additional hours for the health director and health agent during fiscal 2017. Motion made, do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Who would like to address this, please?
Ben Hogan, 73 Gilbert Road, Board of Health. Uh, due to unforeseen circumstances and events that are normally out of our uh, normal business, we've been uh, taxed on our budget this year. Thank you. Any comments? Anyone who want to address this article? This motion? Thank you. Is this on? Yeah, okay. Um, currently in the health department wage line, there is $9,104.96, which if you divide that out by the rate of pay that both of those individuals make and the number of weeks left in the year, they have eight hours, in eight, eight and a half hours per week between the two of them that they can work till the end of the year, which I, I don't know if the Board of Health is not sufficient enough for them, especially since it's springtime and Thank all their busy season is coming up. Thank you. Any other comments, any other questions? Seeing none, we're gonna vote. All those in favor of the motion under Article 17, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. Motion under Article 17 passes unanimously. May I hear a motion for Article 18, please. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer the sum of 9,000 $382 from free cash to upgrade the HVAC system at the Edwards Library. Motion made. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Uh, who would like to address this, please? Barbara Golden, Library Director. This is specifically to upgrade the meeting room, which has a separate system than the rest of the library. Thank you. Any comments? Anybody like to speak against this motion? Any comments, any questions? All those in favor of the motion under Article 18, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. Motion under Article 18 passes unanimously. May I hear a motion, please, for Article 19? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer $3,000 from free cash to the tax title account of the treasurer collector. Motion made, do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Who would like to address this? Vicki. Um, Vicki Morrow, town account in Pomeroy Meadow Road. Currently, um, there is a balance of approximately $90 left in the tax title expense. Um, and if the treasurer is going to continue her, continue her efforts um, in uh, proceeding with potential foreclosures for the town um, in these properties, we needed to put some more money in here for her to be able to do that. Thank you. Anyone want to speak against this motion? Any questions? Any comments? Seeing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion under Article 19, please signify by saying aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. The motion under Article 19 passes unanimously. May I please hear a motion for Article 20? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer $4,300 from free cash to the fire department expense line for the purchase of five defibrillators for the police and fire departments. Motion made, do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. John Workman, Fire Chief, 73 Glendale, East Hampton. Um, the defibrillators uh, had a recall. All of our defibrillators then became obsolete for both the fire department and police department. Um, we borrowed some um, and have since gotten our equipment back online, but they need to be replaced, and that's what this article does. Thank you. Anyone who wishes to speak against this motion? Any questions, any comments? Seeing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion under Article 20, please signify by saying aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. The motion under Article 20 passes unanimously. May I hear a motion, please, for Article 21? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer 9,000 from free cash to the fire department expense line for the purchase of firefighter equipment. Motion made, do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. John Workman, Fire Chief. Um, with this here, our turnout gear is only good for 10 years. Um, we need to replace a tenth of it 
each year in order to stay to current standard. Um, uh, this we're wor looking to work into a line item, but it has to be funded this way this year. Thank you. Anyone who wishes to speak against this motion? Any questions, comments? Seeing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion on Article 21, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. Motion under Article 21 passes unanimously. May I hear a motion, please, for Article 22? I move that the town vote to transfer $5,000 from free cash to the highway department expense line to fund a traffic safety assessment of the Norris School. Motion made or your second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Who would like to address this, please? Road. Um, first of all, I'd like to Get say. Close. That, first of all, um, I'd like to say there is a definite um, problem as far as with the traffic flow. Most of it caused by parents who start lining up a half hour before dismissal or start of school. Um, Five thousand dollars to me sounds like an awful lot of money when because we've got so many cars. I don't know outside of having separate like divide the school and have two different start times and two different dismissal times, there's no way you're going to cut down on the number of cars. And there's, they're lined up all the way from the school down past the post office. In fact, we even have problems with um, parents uh, blocking driveways. But the main problem is just the number of cars. And um, you know, I don't know if the school has considered two different start times, dismissal times, so that, or have it so the parents aren't lining up as, er as early as they do. Many of them start, like I say, half hour early, just read a book or whatever, and um, uh, wait for these uh, school buses so that they can start the <laughs> procession. But um, to me, $5,000 is a lot of money. Thank you. Anyone that want to address this? Yes. Randall Kemp. A little closer. Right? Randall Kemp, South Hampton Highway, Superintendent, uh, Fomer Road. Uh, five grand is our best guess at what this study would cost. Um, I've requested proposals, but haven't received any back yet. Thank you. Heather Pellegrini, Crooked Ledge Road. Um, I have a concern of spending $5,000 only to be told there's going to be a huge capital outlay required to make any improvements. Um, my concern is that there is no additional land available at this location. So even if it were determined that there's a potential safety issue, we really don't have the resources or the property uh, in proximity to this building to um, necessitate any changes that might come of the study. Um, I fear we're throwing $5,000 away if we proceed. Thank you. Henry Barton, 51 Pomeroy Meadow Road. A little closer, I think. Uh, we got to get a better mic. Uh, <clears throat> I would ask uh, Randall if PVPC was uh, approached to see if we could get some free technical assistance on this issue. I'm prepared to vote yes in the face uh, of the Finance Committee's recommendation of a no vote. Thank you. Is that a question? I don't know if Randall, Randall wants to answer that. Uh, should it be voted down, that might be uh, an avenue that could be pursued. Uh, uh, forgive the mixed metaphor. Thank you. Anyone else with an opinion, comment, question? The Board of Selectmen was approached by the police chief, the highway superintendent, and the school department basically because they don't know how to address this problem. That is the reason we're looking for some funding to hire an expert to try to give us some direction. What that direction is going to be, we do not know. But we felt that if we had some expertise in hand on this, we'd make a better choice down the road with this. Thank you. Francine Tishman, 83 Glendale Road. Real, real closer. It was our understanding that this problem 
didn't exist. Address to me, because when you go this way, All right. I can't hear you. It was our understanding that this problem did not exist previously when there was another route for parents to line up to pick up their, their, um, their children. So we were just, the Finance Committee was just thinking, isn't there a solution from within the school if they were to reroute pickup points? And that was the only question we had, and that was one of the reasons why we voted no, or not, not to recommend this expenditure. Thank you. Chief. Mike Wayette, Police Chief, College Highway. Um, prior to the, uh, the new principal, uh, and, and we, we used to have parents coming into the lobby to pick up their kids, and they would all meet in the lobby and, and sit there. Um, due to safety reasons, um, with the way the world is today, we had to change that. Um, the principal did not want everybody just to be able to walk into the school uh, and sit there in the lobby. So the, uh, that's what happened is now we have all the cars lining up on Palmer Meadow Road. We've had many complaints from people that live on Palmer Meadow Road that uh, they're, when they're trying to get out of their driveways, they are unable to see due to the cars. Uh, we've uh, had the highway department uh, put no parking signs up in different areas to uh, help with that problem. Uh, we've also had complaints where once the cars start to pull out from their parking spaces along Palmer Meadow Road, they pull back onto the street, which uh, have forced oncoming traffic into the, or forced traffic that's coming up behind them into the oncoming lane. So there's, there's uh, a lot of different issues that have come up, so that's why we talked to the board and we're asking uh, to have something looked at to prevent these problems. Also, when they have a larger uh, event, um, there's parking on both sides of Gun Road Extension, and there's parking all along Palmer Amato Road, and uh, that causes issues, too, during their larger events. So we were hoping that this could just give us uh, some, some more answers. Thank you. Any, anyone else? Yes. Hello, Aliza Pluta, principal here at North School. Um, like Chief Goyette said and Randall from the Highway Department, we have tried to work together to try to resolve this situation um, in a good faith effort. I think this is bringing brought forth to the community. Um, as Chief Goyette said, prior to my arrival in the end of 2014, um, parents would park on Gun Road Extension in the parking spaces and then come into the school and pick up their children. So. Not only was it a safety issue with anybody and anyone coming into the building to pick up children, but also the pulling in and the pulling out of Gun Road Extension also became a traffic issue or a safety concern. So we had parents lining up, and we, we do tell the parents at the beginning of the school year what time to line up and what time the gate opens. Unfortunately, some people feel they need to show up up to 45 minutes before pickup to be the first in line to get their children to a sports activity or dance class or something. So just wanted to explain that. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else? Any comments, any questions? Seeing none, we're gonna vote. All those in favor of the motion under Article 22, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. even though I think I'm right. Counters, please. All those in favor, hold your cards up. Sometimes one side speaks louder than the other and can be deceiving. Hold those, hold those cards up so they can be counted. first time I tried this, I was wrong, and so we have learned my lesson. Nineteen. 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 Put your hands down. Uh, all those against, uh, hold your cards up.
21. 21. Seventeen. <laughs> they teach us in moderator school that no moderator worth their salt will allow a tie to go down. And I've always wondered what I would do. Um, <laughs> we're, we're, <laughs> we're allowed to have personal feelings. Um, I'm moved by the fact that this is a study, there is a problem. I vote aye, the motion passes by majority. Motion for Article 23, please. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer $4,360.20 from the Highway Department Expenses Line to the Highway Department Administrative Wage Line to fund 10 additional hours of administrative support for the Highway Department. Motion made, do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Who would like to speak on this, please? Randall. Randall Kemp, Southampton Highway Superintendent. Um, we have a number of projects that we want to get done, and uh, my newly hired administrative assistant has been working out very well. And uh, if we can get her more hours and work on some of these projects, it will be a good thing for the town. Thank you. Who would like to speak against this motion, please? Who? Any questions, comments? Thank you for waiting. <laughs> Charlie, quick. <laughs> Try this. Hello? Tammy Walunas, 298 College Highway. Mr. Moderator, does this make her eligible for benefits? And if so, do we have the money for this? Question? Randall's going to answer. She's already working 20 hours a week and eligible for benefits, so her status would be unchanged. Okay. That answer, watch the... Heather Pellegrini, Crooked Ledge Road. Uh, I would just ask, um, out of curiosity and for information's sake, could we be apprised of what the upcoming projects for the highway superintendent are? Good question. Absolutely. Um, number one, due to a resident concern uh, about a number of town roads being plowed, uh, unaccepted roads, we have begun the process to process to determine which roads have been accepted. What complicates matters is that sometimes only a certain number of feet of road were accepted or a road has been extended or a change of name or any number of minutia which will have to be investigated to determine the scale of the problem. We've even found instances where a road is listed as both accepted and not accepted. We are building upon a road spreadsheet begun by the town clerk's office. Uh, that's the first project, and it sort of goes into the second project. We have to update the Southampton Road Inventory for Chapter 90 uh, calculations to ensure that we are receiving all state money possible, confirmation of the length of each mi road mile, and completion of the necessary paperwork would be what was involved in that. Organizing the plans of the roads in Southampton, um, we have drawers of big plans um, I'd like to eventually get them scanned and have them available online so they're easier to find. In addition, I'm missing a number of roads. Uh, there are no plans for them. They may exist somewhere, but we have to look for them. Um, and uh, I would get a whole list of them, but I'll just stick to four since that's what the motion said. Uh, preparation of our annual recycling ro report for the DEP. This is involved in, uh, uh, we have to do this every year for transfer station um, uh, reporting, basically. That answer your question? Great, thank you. Dan Pellegrini, Crooked Ledge Road. I'd be that individual Randall referred to. And <coughs> spending, I don't know, hour, hour and a half on the state website, I have a list of all the roads right here. So I, I, I'm the individual Randall was referring to that brought the plowing forward. 
And well, this, that we don't be out of order here. We need to only talk about transferring the funds. Uh, a separate question was answered, so we're back to. And after spending one hour on the state website and looking through the town records of roads we've accepted, I have the list of all the roads right here, which was provided to the highway department and the select board. Thank you. There's a website that has Thank all you. this information. You made your point. Okay. So uh, you, I you don't see any validity, and I don't think you it's worth it. You made your point, sir. Aaron Kucher, 49 Coleman Road. Um, my question has to do with um, why was this not budgeted when we did the budget process? How, why are we just adding in money now on projects um, when other departments have to budget it for the year? Okay. Michael Rosenberg, uh, Finance Committee, 144 East Street. Um, a little closer, Michael. I am stepping in for Randall at the moment. Um, if you'd like to come up and answer the question, you can, but I might be able to answer it for him. Um, originally, the article did call for the funds to come from an outside account, whether it be free cash or one of the stabilization funds. After talking with Randall, um, he thought it'd be best if we can fund it internally. It's the best way to do that. You're not asking to take money from the rainy day account, your savings account. So he graciously moved numbers around and made the budget work to keep his department moving forward. Um, he has consistently, progressively worked towards getting up to speed in the highway department, taking on new projects, working on the Chapter 90 funds, um, which I know are also a part of the, the project in the spring. So as a member of the Finance Committee, as a resident, I do support this. I think that's a great use of internal funds and internal budgeting with your own, within your own department. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a good thing that other departments should do as well. If you can bear the burden in your budget, it's a great thing. Thank you. I answer your question now? What you got? Good. Any other comments? Questions? Hearing none, we're going to vote. All those in favor of the motion under Article 23, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. The uh, motion under Article 23 passes by majority. May I hear a motion for Article 24, please? Mr. Moderator. I move that the town transfer $30,000 from the Operational Stabilization Fund to re for the removal or stabilization of a gasoline storage tank at the Highway Department. Motion made. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Who would like to address this, Randall? Randall Kemp, Highway Superintendent. Um, so if Anybody who was here two years ago remembers three years ago now. Our 4,000 ga gallon gasoline underground storage tank had to be taken out of service due to a detection of gasoline in the interstitial space of the double wall tank. Um, November 25th, 2016, we re received a notice of noncompliance. Um, basically, to make a long story short, the tank has got to be removed or closed in place. Um, these cost estimates are on the high end, but with any environmental work, once you go into the ground, is, uh, you, you find things. But the tank has to be either closed in place or taken out of the ground or, uh, because we are out of compliance currently. Thank you. Anyone want to speak against this motion? Any questions, any comments? Seeing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion under where are we? 25, yeah. Please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. The motion under Article 25 passes unanimously. May I hear a motion for Article 26, please? Article 25. <coughs> I move. My bad, my bad. We were voting on a motion under Article 24 that uh, passed unanimously, meeting our two thirds requirement. May I hear a motion under Article 25, please? I move that $3,200 be transferred from free cash to the Operational Stabilization Fund of the town. Motion made. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Who would like to address this, please? Mr. Moderator, at our last town meeting, we transferred this amount of money to pay a, a bill. 
with the understanding that we'd put this back into stabilization if we had that free cash. So the Board of Selectmen put this back on in front of town meeting to put the money back. Thank you. Anyone want to speak ag against this motion under Article 25? Any questions? Comments? We're going to vote. All those in favor of the motion under Article 25, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. The motion under Article 25 passes unanimously. May I hear the motion for Article 26, please? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town meeting approves putting a question on the ballot at the annual town election on acceptance of Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 6C, to enable the town to remove snow and ice on private ways open to public use in the interest of public safety. Motion made. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Who would like to address this motion, please? Or we're going to take a proponent, speak for it, and then we'll take someone to speak against it. Charlie, or are you going to speak for it, sir? Uh, I guess I, I, I will say that I will vote for this. Uh, I'm not Closer. So they I can't hear I'm you in the back. I can. I guess I will say I'm going to vote for this, so I suppose I am a proponent. Uh, the reason I'm speaking, however, is that there are in town a number of common driveways, and I think that... Uh, with all due respect to the research that Randall and his people are doing, uh, there ought to be a distinction made between private roads and common driveways. I know of at least one common driveway that's almost as wide as a street. Uh, and if we're not careful in making that distinction, we may end up plowing a lot of common driveways. Common driveway being a driveway which has two or three houses uh, attached to it by common agreement, whose owners uh, typically share the expense of uh, clearing it and maintaining it. Thank you. Dan Pellegrini, Crooked Ledge Road. Uh, the question I have is clearly right here there's an uh, outcrop of the Mass State Law and it says for this to be voted on there needs to be a petition with 200 signatures on it. Where is that petition? Do we have that? And if not, why are we circumventing Mass State Law? Under what authority are we circumventing that? Question, answer? Mr. Moderator, Charlie Kanaki, Chairman, Board of Selectmen. Uh, first of all, we're not circumventing state law. We are asking the residents at this town meeting for their opinions to give this board sort of a direction as to where this board should go. This is a free, open town meeting so that people can voice their opinion. Two, this question came before this board. This board never approached this in years past. We seem to have a list of roads that are of concerns that are actually being plowed, Bass Cove Road, White of Way, Wallace Road, Bisnet Circle, Brickyard Road Extension seem to be the ones on the list. What we're trying to do is get sort of an opinion here. We also have blank petitions in the back of this room people can sign if they want to see this go to the ballot. And we also drafted a letter that would go to the residents because we're going to have a public meeting in this building. I don't remember the date, but it's the end of March to bring this to be the 22nd of March here so people have more opportunity to discuss this. Let's say hypothetically this goes to ballot and it gets passed. All it does is authorize the Board of Selectmen to decide if a private road should be plowed in the interest of public safety. It does not mean that every private road, private driveway, or anything of that nature gets plowed. It just gives the authority to the Selectmen. If there is no vote on this, and this does not move forward, as of July 1, these roads that I just listed will no longer be plowed. Thank you. Does that answer your question? It, it does, but it puts me in more, uh, brings up another question. If you look Fine. at the motion, it But it, it answered your question? No. It didn't? No, not really. Okay. Because if you look at the motion, the motion is asking to put it on the ballot is not asking for an opinion if it should be. So to me, a yes vote puts it on the ballot, which goes against mass state law, which says you have to have 200 people signing it. So uh, I'm, I'm confused as to why we're saying one thing, but the paperwork and the, the documentation says another. Thank you. 
Mr. Moderator, that question was posed to town council. Town council drafted that motion at that language. I can't speak directly for town council, but basically it was to give direction for the town to give the select board a direction. Okay. With that answer, I vote to have this struck because it is not matching with their description. It is basically binding this town to put this on a ballot, circumventing the Mass State Law, which says we have to have 200 residents petition the town to have this on, not the select board come here and put it in front of us. So I, I make whatever motion, and I look to you for my guidance, to have this struck because it is not lining up with the prem premise and the principle of what was just I, displayed. I'm here to guide any, any voter in the mechanics of making a motion. I need to know your intent. The, the intent is based on what Mr. Kanicki said. No, no, you're, you're, no. My you're, intent you're is, to, is to have this taken struck. Right, that's, that's table, that's killing the article. Correct. And so if you make that motion, then I need a second. Motion made and seconded. There is no debate. Requires two thirds. All those in favor of tabling, killing this motion under this article, please signify by saying aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. nay. We need counters. All those willing to table this motion, raise your cards. To table it means to kill it. Eight. Eight. Fifteen. Sixteen. Fifteen. Fifteen. Put your hands down. Um, all those against tabling it and continuing your discussion, raise your hands. Twenty-five. Twenty-four. Put your hands The motion to table fails. We will continue discussion the motion under Article 26. I, I would like to, as a resident who has to pay $200, uh, a part of a uh, road that has to pay $200 a snowstorm, remind everyone there is a way that these towns can be accepted, these roads can be accepted, and it's clearly stated, and we should follow the process. One. Two, by these not being public roads, we do not get any state funds or federal funds, which every time you buy gas, you pay taxes for that. So we're, we're avoiding that. So at a minimum, if we decide to continue this, we should pick these roads up and reap the benefits of the state funds. So I think we need to think long and hard about this, and laws apply to all, not just individuals. With that said, I would like to also oppose an amendment to Article 26, and I have it here in writing. You need it double, so if you have a second Two. copy, great. We have an amendment. If the result of store of vote to continue the plowing of private ways is no, the practice of plowing private ways, that is roads not currently accepted as public ways, shall cease within 30 days of this special town meeting vote dated January 4, 2017. We have an amendment to the motion. Do we have a second? We have a second. Uh, then we have discussion on the amendment. Read, read the amendment? Yes. Okay. Uh, if the result of straw vote to continue the plowing of private ways is no, 
the practice of plowing private ways, that is roads not currently accepted as public ways, shall cease within 30 days of the special town meeting vote dated January 4th, 2017. This may not be legal, but I'm not here to determine that. So we have a motion to amend and we have a second to that. So we will discuss this amendment. Anyone like to address this? Point of order, any time. I heard a second over here. All right. I, this is why I stand up. This is why I get elevated. I can see. I can control things. And uh, it's teamwork. I thank you. I am sorry. You're out of order. I'm somebody's it, at the mic. It, and the reason why. A point of order. Okay. January 24th. It might be my dryness. I. I Keep, don't want to keep drinking the water, but tw January 24th, yes. And, and the reason I'm bringing this forward is uh, I've asked on a number of occasions for this to stop, and we've known about it as a town and some town officials for a number of years. So I suspect if we don't stop it now, it, it may continue. And again, there's a right way to do it, which is put it on the ballot and have the town vote for it through the, uh, um, you know, the petition. And then second of that, it should go as a town road and we should take state benefits. So I think we should cut the cord within 30 days and uh, do it right if we want to do it. Thank you. Michael Rosenberg, um, Finance Committee. I'm actually just asking if you can read that one more time. Of course. Thank you. If the result of straw vote to continue the plowing of private ways is no, there'd be no on the motion, I assume, the practice of plowing private roads, that is, roads not currently accepted as public ways, shall, excuse me, shall cease within 30 days of the special town meeting vote dated January 24, 2017. Michael Rosenberg, Finance Committee, and maybe I'm having, I'm just trying to get the language straight in my head. So the motion you have before you. The amendment, yes. The amendment you have before you is, read that one more time. <laughs> if the result of straw vote to continue the plowing of private ways so, is no. So right there, the straw vote is not to continue the plowing. The straw vote is to place it on the ballot. That's so why we're having a okay, discussion. That's, that's why I had you read it again. Yep. Do I need to change it, or is the principle still? You, you can amend an amendment, um, and then we'll vote on that, oh. and then we need to vote on or, the amendment. Or, or do we understand the principle and we're good enough? Yeah, or it? you can withdraw it. Would oh, you like to withdraw no, it? No, I don't want to withdraw it. Then you will listen to what I'm asking, please. So what is your amendment to this amendment? I would like to add to place on the ballot opposed to continue to plow. To place on the ballot. I'm in, I'm in, honestly, I'm indifferent. It's just there's a language difference between the previous. No, and, and I believe that corrects it. Here, so. just could could you read it with the? If the result of straw vote to continue the plowing of private ways is no, the practice of plowing private ways, that is roads not currently accepted as public ways, shall cease within 30 days of this special town meeting vote dated January 24. So we're amending this now. But the straw, that, that, no, that, okay. no, we're, we're, no. We're amending okay. this now. I need, sir, you're no. out of order. That's your second warning. You address me, nobody else. Yes, sir. Well, how are we going to amend this? instead of where it says to continue plowing on that first sentence right to add it to the ballot i believe is what the term here is question question on the ballot to add it to the ballot to place on the ballot correct to place on the ballot got it thank, thank you, you. <coughs> we're talking about the amendment to the amendment to the motion so only discussion about his new verbiage only. Okay, thank you.
We're going to vote on the words that were just interjected to the amendment. All those in favor of the added words to the amendment, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. nay. So the amendment to the amendment, the motion fails. We're now back to the amendment as written. We're going to vote on that amendment. All those in favor of the amendment to the motion, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. nay. The amendment fails by majority. Now we have the motion before us. You cannot be recognized sitting in the audience. That was very clear at the beginning. We did away with that five, eight, nine years ago. Yes, sir. Eileen Bork, Palmer and Meadow. I have a few questions. Yes. Um, I know a lot of the recent contractors have been building homes and they've been put through as private ways. And I'm wondering what the liability is now if the town assumes the plowing those roads. Um, and also, um, we've got a lot that are considered private roads versus common driveways. And like um, Palmer Village is. 32 condo buildings, and yet it's considered a private driveway, even though each unit has driveways. I mean, there's so many. So you're barriers. looking for an answer on what yeah, the as liability far as of the, the town, town and how they're going to determine private roads, private ways, private I think driveways? The town has a blanket coverage of liability, but Bob Markle will answer that for us. One who was, who has been involved with uh, discussions with town council about this particular article as well as the motion. Uh, just to clarify, although town council drafted the motion, I think it is confusing. However, it's clear that the process involves a petition by 200 residents uh, of the town. Uh, if this passes, this question will not automatically go to the ballot. This is not a sense of the town meeting to put this on the ballot. The way it goes to the ballot is a 200-person petition, for one thing. I want to make that clear. Thank you. I think the language that town council drafted may be confusing, but they're not confused, and they're very clear that it has to be a petition by 200 uh, uh, residents of the town. This in may order be to a get good to reason why my policy before tonight was no straw polls at a town meeting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going to vote. Yeah. And as far as liability, I also discussed liability issues with the insurance company at the request of the board. Uh, the town does not incur any additional liability uh, with the current policy and would not incur any liability if, in fact, a ballot question were to pass. We are insured. Okay. Can I ask one more question? Yes. As far as this, um, it, I don't know how many streets we're talking about. Would this probably lead to an override for funds because of the additional plowing that would be necessary? Good question. Randall. We are currently plowing, I think we've come up with four. Four, four. four roads. We're already doing it with our existing funds. I'm not looking to plow more roads, but that is up to the select board. I think the question was, would this lead to? The answer is no. Okay. Answer your question, no. Okay, we're going to vote. We're going to vote on the motion. Move that the town meeting approves putting a question on the ballot at the annual town election on acceptance of Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 6C, to enable the town to remove snow and ice on private ways open to public use in the interest of public safety. All those in favor of this motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. nay. Passes by majority. May I hear a motion for Article 27, please? Mr. Moderator. I move that the town vote to transfer $80,000 from Capital Stabilization Fund to fund the purchase of laptop computers at the Wilmie Norris School. 
Motion made. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Who would like to address this, please? Margaret Larson, 9 David Street, and member of the Capital Improvement Committee. The moderator and the voters may recall that uh, last year, Norris came to us with a request for laptops for teachers, 22 laptops, which was um, voted on by the town. Um, in lieu of that, this year, they are requesting laptops for the students. The Department of Education has mandated that all students take the MCAS required standardized test on um, via computer. So it, this is an unfunded mandate. There's no funding from the state for this, and uh, there's been some research done to see if there's another source of funding for this. There is not that can currently be identified. Uh, right now, Norris's bar his plan for this year is to borrow laptops from Hampshire Regional. That is not sustainable. And so the Capital Improvement Committee has recommended this. Thank you. Is there anyone who wishes to speak against this motion? Against? Uh, Mr. Moderator, I rise to oppose this uh, passage of this warrant based on an issue that should be of concern to all of us, and that is that by insisting that standardized testing be taken on computers, the state, as it so often does, is imposing on cash-strapped communities such as Southampton another non-funded mandate. If the state wants the tests to be taken on computer, it should provide the computers. But rather than doing that, it is permitting the corporations that are the vendors of standardized tests, such as Measured Progress Incorporated, to dramatically increase its bottom line by not having to pay the costs associated with printing and distributing papered tests. So in other words, I'm opposing this because it is an unfunded mandate, and I think a message should be sent to the Board of Education that towns can no longer absorb these kinds of expenses, such as no longer funding transportation for regionalized schools and the other mandates that they just pass along to us. Thank without you for making the point. Payment. Thank you. That's it. Yes, sir. Mark Lawrence, Miller Avenue. Uh, I believe the Gazette article for uh, this town meeting mentioned that the state would allow pencil and paper tests. They just very, very highly recommend the computer. And I'd like to make sure that the, this mandate is indeed a mandate. Thank you. Dan Pellegrini, Crooked Ledge Road. Uh, I have children in the, stu uh, in the schools, and uh, I do believe we should move forward and, and modernize our, our school system. Uh, that is one of the selling assets of this town is our education, our school systems. Second to that, I also work for uh, a technology company, Hewlett Packard, and uh, at the end of the day, if you do not embrace technology, from day one, you're going to be left behind in the workforce. We have to spend money to modernize our school systems and give our children the head start. Look at the next articles, $46,000 no, for we wood need chipper. To stay on this I, one. Fair, I, fair, fair, though, fair, but we need to I, stay with this. I understand. So I do not see when you walk into that school any computers and you go into just about any other school district around and there's computers. We have to get them in front of our children. Whether they're used for the state testing or not, that's a different discussion. We need to get them here and they can be used for more than just the state testing. Thank you. Erin. Erin Kucher, Coleman Road. Um, so I'm actually also the head of the school committee and we don't have a choice. You can say we can stand up and not buy them. Um, all it does is hurt the school and hurt the kids. We can lose ratings um, if our kids are not in compliance. And right now we're only doing fourth grade. We had to show that one of our, one of our um, grades could do it, but by next year we have to have them all on computers being tested. So this, even though it's unfunded by the state, they do this all the time and us standing up is gonna do nothing but hurt our school, hurt our kids. Thank you. Leo Demerbauer, One Big Curry Lane. Uh, it's not a question of taking the test, but we are in the 21st century, and computers are a necessity, as gentlemen previously said, to advance and jobs possibilities. And I would encourage that uh, 
the uh, funds somehow are being raised to bring computers into the schools because not everybody has ac uh, the children have access to computers at the house. Thank you. Susan Sussman, Golden Circle. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to know how many computers this would buy, where the price cost, where this cost came from, and if this would go out to bid so we would know the process. It seems like a pretty big chunk of change, so. Thank you. Question, answer. Uh, answer, um, Kim Florick, the Director of Technology, 45 Middle Street, Florence, Mass. Um, I'd like to address that last question about the cost and, and whatnot. Thank you. Um, the the cost the eighty thousand dollars that we're asking for is uh, covering the cost of computers as well as the warranties, the protective cases, the laptop carts, uh, charging stations that things would be placed in. So um, with that eighty thousand dollars, we're able to buy off of the state oh, contract. No, no. Well, I'm sorry, we're after. Yep, yeah, yeah, but the mic so they can hear it. We're we're um, we're able to buy off of the state contract. Our state contract. Um, uh, if, for those you don't know, for the state um, has a competitive bidding process for best uh, prices. They allow us to buy off of their contract prices to obtain the best prices possible for computers equip uh, computing equipment. Um, and so that, that's where the um, so competitive bids. We don't have to go out again for competitive bids. We can use that contract. Um, trying to go to something else. The, there was a question about state contract, and there was a question on, on funding rather. Uh, bidding. Um, question was, how many students will this serve? How many lap? So we're looking at uh, how many with laptops, eighty laptops. Sorry. Yeah, we're looking at um, we're looking at eighty that. laptops for uh, to be able to do uh, for eighty laptops to be able to do laptops, the cases, a cart, a uh, station for it to to be placed in. The dollar amount that we're spending. Um, when I look at, I did a ten-year replacement plan for the school for all technology. And with the 10-year replacement plan, when we look at the types of computers that we're actually purchasing, we're looking at a replacement plan in the order of seven years. So um, other models, when we looked at replacement plans, the replacement for those models, which may be a little less expensive, was a four-year turnaround replacement plan. So if you take a look at over a 10-year span, you're actually not replacing the computers as often with by putting just a little bit more memory and power into the computer, we'll be able to upgrade um, and stay in compliance with the types of software that we need to run in order to do um, many things, not only state testing, but also other educational software and digital curric curriculum that we're using. So um, based on a 10-year plan, I believe firmly that th this is the right choice for the school and it's fiscally responsible. Thank you. Did that answer your question? Susan Sussman, Golden Circle. My, I guess I'm confused now because if we're, if this pricing, it's a thousand dollars a computer, and also cases. So are these computers that are going home with the students? Are these staying in the schools so that all of the students have the access? It becomes a computer lab. I mean, if we're playing okay. for cases, are they going home? And my second question is, if eighty thousand is only this year's, is the other eighty thousand going to be? in the school budget in May in our town meeting, or are we going to have to have another special meeting for another special $80,000 next year? So the 80, the, um, the cases, the cases are protective. They're not to be going, uh, so laptops will not be going home with students. The cases that I'm referring to are protective shells. They're hard case shells that go on to the laptops in case a laptop is dropped or, uh, in, or, or banged. It's really for protection of the laptop. So it doesn't, it, just like an iPhone or a phone or an Android phone, you're gonna get a protective case for it. So the cases that I'm referring to are for protection uh, of the laptop itself. Okay. Thank you. And uh, didn't answer the question, but no one can answer the question, what's going to be in a budget or what's gonna be in town meeting, because no person can represent uh, a board or committee, so I did not expect an answer to that part of your question. Charlie? 
Uh, I just want to remind everyone that the eighty thousand dollars that we're asking for is excess tax funds this year. So it is not increasing our taxes. We're not asking for any money. We're we're asking to spend the excess money from the town that because we did a good job. So again, in a year where we have excess money, why not address a gaping wound in a requirement we're going to have, which is to modernize our schools and continue with that asset. Remember, we are a bedroom community, and the reason why bedrooms move in this town is because of our school systems and our community, and we have to invest in them. And this is a chance where we have excess tax funds this year to move it in there. It's not painting a liability picture for the next six years of someone's benefits or anything like that. The 80000 is done. We'll have the computers for 10 years. It makes sense. Thank you. Aaron Kutcher, Coleman Road. Um, so please remember we have over 500 students in the school and this is buying 80 laptops. So we are going to be using these throughout. With the, we're not asking to buy a laptop for every kid in the school and we're being fiscally responsible and trying to work within a budget that the, t that the town has. Um, and we would love for the town to give us more money for the 80,000. Um, we can try, but we'll see what happens there. This is the 80,000 for the computers that we need right now to start it. Thank you. Henry Barton, 51 Pomeroy Meadow Road. Uh, I'm going to vote against this uh, unless somebody from the school department here can tell me that unlike many other schools, our, school has, our schools, plural, have not uh, had to squeeze out music, art, physical education because so much time has to be given to these uh, high-pressure tests. I'd really like to hear about that. Okay. I don't think that uh, buying more computers uh, is going to uh, well. Let me put it. A, let me put it another way. I think, uh, w with regard to a previous speaker, uh, I think there is so much digital apparatus around in the society that very few kids, by the time they get to the fifth or sixth grade, don't know how to use computers. Thank you. Thank you. You've been up twice already. Please allow somebody else an opportunity that hasn't spoken yet. Jane Hughes, Miller Avenue. If we have $80,000 extra in an account, how about if we give it to the police department? We could use another full-time officer. That's out of officer. order from the, you can only talk about the motion that is under this article. Okay. Are your comments out of order? Okay, thanks, sorry. That's a lot of money for students. A lot of these kids, how many of them have computers at home? How many of them even have cell phones, um, iPhones? That's a lot of money for the taxpayers to be footing a bill for. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you. Uh, we're going to accept a pro and a con. Susan Sussman, Golden Circle. My budget question before was related to the language here that's in the summary where it says the total cost of equipping equipping students with laptops will be 160000 over two years. We're not voting on a summary. They're a double-edged sword. They can confuse and they can aid in understanding an emotion. We are only voting on the motion. So the $80,000 in this article, they can move ahead and purchase the computers with 80,000. They don't need the full 160 that we're going to vote on at a future date in order to move ahead with this process. Is that correct? We're only talking about 80,000, yes. And one more person, and you were, yeah, um, not behind you, Michael. She was, she was standing, but she was too polite to get right behind the other person <laughs> at the mic. <laughs> not, not, that, not that you're impolite. Go ahead. Um, Michael Rosenberg, Finance Committee. One thing, just to, just to bring us kind of back down to the point of this, it's to provide technology to the students in a school that don't have the technology. Um, it's for testing. It's going to be for other purposes. It's not just for them to sit down and take a test for half an hour and close the laptop. It's to bring them, it's to bring them to a level to what other schools are at, and frankly, how adults operate in life. We use computers for everything. You're, child should be learning how to do that in school as well. Um, 
in regards to where the funds are coming from, um, as the gentleman said before, before this is excess in the capital um, fund. That fund is managed, per se, by the Capital Improvement Committee. They receive requests every year. They have a ranking system, and the fact that this is in front of us means that it ranked very high in the need for the town, and we should really consider that when voting for this. It is a definite need. Thank you. We're going to vote. Uh, we've, we've heard the remarks and, and the opinions. We're, move that, we're going to vote, move that the town vote to transfer $80,000 from the Capital Stabilization Fund to fund the purchase of laptop computers at the William E. Norris School. We need a two-thirds majority. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. I need counters. Hold your cards up, those in favor, please. Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. Forty-two. Forty-two. Please put your hands down. All those opposed to the motion, raise your hands. Nine. 71 to 13, the motion passes by majority, meeting its two-thirds requirement. May I hear a motion for Article 28, please? I move the town vote to transfer $46,000 from the Operations Stabilization Fund to the Highway Department expense line for the purchase of a wood chipper, not truck. Mm -hmm. Motion made, do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Who would like to address this, please? Margaret Larson, 9 David Street, Capital Improvement. Um, so I wanted to explain why we are taking, uh, we're recommending this be transferred from the operating stabilization bu closer. budget. Sorry, is that better? Yes. Thank you. Uh, so we, with the transfer of the amount of money from free cash that we voted on tonight, we were looking in the neighborhood of about $180,000 available to us in the capital, capital Improvement Fund. Uh, we had several requests that exceeded that amount, uh, and we prioritized in our recommendations for the town, the laptop computers, as well as the brush truck for the depa fire department. And then we recommended that the wood chipper instead, uh, the money would be transferred from operating stabilization. And I'll let um, Randall talk about the need for the chipper. Okay. Anyone like this? Randall. Randall Kemp, Highway Superintendent. So we currently have a 1993 Brush Bandit. Um, it got a lot of work during the 2010 storm where all the trees came down. It worked three months straight every day. Um, I approached Capital Improvement two years ago, um, and they turned it down at that time. They suggested we put some money in it to fix it. Uh, my mechanic estimates that parts and labor, we've put probably $3,500 into it since then. It continues to degrade. It's an old piece of equipment. I want to be prepared for another storm uh, like the one in 2010. Um, other than that, we do use it on a daily, uh, not a daily basis, but weekly or monthly basis for vegetation management, ch chipping up stuff when they come down, uh, or trimming trees. Thank you. Anyone wish to speak against this motion? 
I'm not sure I want to speak against it. I just want to remind everyone if we're looking to save some money, prime place to save it. Not necessarily our kids' education and the value of our school system, but maybe we can let some branches sit on the side of the road for a little while. So I, I would vote to save the money there if we're going to save it anywhere. Thank you. Anyone else? Heather Pellegrini, Crooked Ledge Road. Um, I don't doubt that there is a need potentially for a new piece of equipment. Um, I have concern that we just passed moving money into opera operating stabilization um, on the premise that's for a rainy day. I would argue that buying new equipment isn't really a, a rainy day expenditure. How many like to address that? Vicki, Charlie? Uh, Charlie Konecki, I also sit on the Capitol Committee, and the Highway Department came to us a few years ago about the brush truck, uh, brush, yeah, chipper, and uh, the reality back then was we felt that it would limp along, but based on the antiquated safety equipment that's on the current equipment, given its age and its use, we feel that drawing off the capital, uh, the stabilization account is a rainy day necessity it still leaves us with putting in over $100,000 in savings this year, and we've done well with that in the last couple of years. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I'm sure Vicki does, and we think that this reaches a point of priority that we need to draw from it. Thank you. Vicki? So, um, Vicki Morrow, town accountant, Pomeroy Meadow Road. Um, uh, stabilization funds, if passed by the town, can be used by statute for any useful purpose, and this would fall under that useful purpose. If this passes and the transfer back that we put in and the storage tank that we took out and the amount that we'll transfer from free cash in the previous articles, we'll end up with $338,852 barring any interest that we earn till the end of the year in that particular fund. Thank you. Any other comments? Any other questions? Seeing none, we're going to vote. All those in favor of the motion under Article 28 needs a two-thirds majority. Please indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, please indicate by saying nay. Any counters? We have to report to the Attorney General what the count is. And um, All those in favor, raise your hands. The moderator should not be allowed even if it's obvious to guess the number. No. Not whenever it needs a two-thirds majority is something different. Then the moderator can rule. Keep your hands up. Thirty-two. Thirty-four. Please put your hands down. All those opposed to the motion, please indicate by raising your hands now. Three. Zero. The motion passes by 66 to 3 meeting the two-thirds majority. May I hear a motion for Article 29, please? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer the sum of $88,620 to fund the purchase of a brush truck for the fire department, said sum to be transferred from the capital stabilization fund. Motion made, do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Who would like to address this, please? Uh, John Workman, Fire Chief. Um, our current brush truck is a 1984 military surplus. Uh, it's 33 years old. It's unreliable and uh, past its lifespan. We really need to replace our brush truck. Thank you. Anyone who wish to speak against this motion? Any comments, any questions? We need a two-thirds majority. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, please indicate by saying nay. Anybody say nay? Passes by majority. Motion under Article 30, please. When I call a vote, that's it. We have, and we meet the two-third requirement. 
past five which already meet our two-thirds requirement. Replacement of water mains. I'm sorry, unanimous, we meet and we meet our two-thirds requirement. Thank you for correcting me. Motion under Article 30, please. Mr. Moderator, I move that the sum of $100,000 be transferred from the water enterprise retained earnings account to pay for the cost construction of water system improvements along College Highway in the association in association with the Safe Routes to School Sidewalks Project. Motion made, do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Who would like to address this, please? Matthew Christie, Middle Road, Chairman of Water Commission. The state, as we all may know, is putting a new sidewalk in for us along Route 10, and part of that work requires relocation of the water main. Uh, this is one of the more problematic mains that we have in town in terms of repairs. It's also one of the oldest mains. So the Water Commission has elected, decided to um, extend the water project beyond the scope of the sidewalk project to repair that problematic main. Thank you. Anybody wish to speak against this motion? Just nobody needs an invitation. Step right up to the mic. Hi, Haley Pearl, um, College Highway. I have a question. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. My question is, um, being a resident who was affected three times um, over the summer by the broken water mains on College Highway, I kind of I just want to know what the scope of the work is going to be um, in terms of how far down it's going, and then also um, I'm not sure if the sidewalk is now complete um, or if the sidewalk will extend further, um, but I just have questions about the scope of the project. Okay. Thank you. Question of uh, the scope of the project, how far down? Uh, Matthew Christie, Middle Road, Water Commission. Closer. The scope of the project for the water main replacement will be from Pomeroy Middle Road all the way to Park Place. Okay. The and entire. The question is the depth. Yeah, yeah, you can't hear in the back, so really. The scope, like of, the scope of the project goes from Pomeroy Middle Road all the way to Park Place. We'll be replacing the entire water main along that stretch. Okay. And the question was about depth. How low will the pipe be? The depth be? will be at a standard water main depth of at least five feet deep. Okay. That answer your question? That answer your question? No, it didn't. All right, come back. By scope, do you mean valves and the diameter of pipes? To answer, the sidewalk project hasn't been started yet. That'll be started by the state in the springtime. Yeah, but she, she has. Come, come, come. You don't have to be. You just come right up to the mic. My question is mostly answered. Um, I just want to know how long the sidewalk will extend eventually and where those will um, end up. Did you hear the question? This, this article is about the water main extension no. project. It's not right. about the sidewalk right. project. He's right. Scope of the article. It's about the water mains. Any other comments, questions? It's easy to veer off in, in adjoining information, but we need to stick on the umbrella of motion. All those in favor? Of the motion on Article 30, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, please indicate by saying nay. The article, uh, motion under Article 30 passes unanimously. This concludes our business for the night. I will entertain a motion now to dissolve our special town meeting. Second? All in favor? Thank you, Ms. Janine Denomina, our elected town clerk, our counters, Officer Goyette, East Hampton Media. Paul and Ryan, thank you all for a valid participation. Give yourself a big hand. This special town meeting is dissolved. Safe home. Thank you.